Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And always with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson of Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in his majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall, they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Mary. My soul proclaims greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. And, all, and the Almighty has done great, great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud and the conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help of his, he has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. When Christ came into this world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure in. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will. O oh God, in the scroll of the book that was written for me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? And why has this happened to me? Why has this happened to me is often heard spoken when someone has experienced something unsettling, upsetting, or unpleasant. We rarely ask such a question when good things happen. Yet why has this happened to me is an important question for all of us to ponder as we prepare for the birth of Jesus. Just as Elizabeth and Mary will soon bring new life into the world, God is bringing new life into our world. What will this new life look like? How will this new life change my life? How will my life with the love of Jesus be manifested through the fruits I bear? Why has this happened to me? That God has heard a prayer of mine and a prayer of yours, a prayer for the world. A prayer we pray weekly for peace in the world. In fact, we often hear people actually laugh about praying for peace because it seems so far away, so unattainable, so unrealistic. Why is this happening to us that we should be given the opportunity to walk as Elizabeth walked beside Mary with people who are creating new life? Is this an answer to our prayer to be people of peace, furthering world peace through friendships? You may have read this week in the e-news that our vestry has been talking about assisting in the resettling of Afghan refugees in this area. And we have a core group that have come to me and indicated that they are very interested in participating in this. And right now, we are gathering more information about it. But according to the International Resettlement Committee, as I understand it, this is really only about a six-month commitment and a financial commitment of $3,000 to $5,000 and a commitment to help people actually get relocated into an apartment and into the community. And as I said, our vestry at this time is exploring this to see if this is a project our congregation might take on. But when I read this lesson today, or actually when I read it earlier in the week, when I read the lesson and thought, the situation of these people from Afghan is not unlike what Mary and Elizabeth were experiencing. You'll remember, Palestine was under the domination of Rome, and people were tyrants who were 
ruling the country, and life was very difficult for the people who resided there. And when, yet we hear in this lesson that when the angel Gabriel told Mary that Elizabeth was pregnant, Gabriel didn't say, now go to Elizabeth, go see her right now. But that's what Mary did. She went to her kinfolk, to Elizabeth, who was also pregnant. And you'll recall Elizabeth and Zachariah were an older couple. And Elizabeth had been barren and a least likely candidate for pregnancy. And Mary was a young woman, a young girl actually, who was not yet married, and again, an unlikely candidate for pregnancy. But both of these women said yes. Yes, that they would do as they had been instructed. And that Mary knew her scriptures so well, she knew that this was the fulfillment of what had been prophesied by the prophets. That this had been told that one, a Messiah, would come. And I'm sure she was frightened. I think we can all imagine what that might have been like. It was frightening. And to go, to actually go to where Elizabeth lived, and we don't know for sure where Elizabeth lived, but we don't know if Mary went by herself or, or why she went because Gabriel hadn't told her to go. But my theory on this is she went because she wanted the support and she wanted to share this time with her cousin. And as soon as Elizabeth saw Mary, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped in joy that the one who we would later call John the Baptist recognized that this was the one that had been promised. This was the Savior. Now, you know, this is interesting that she reached out to another woman of faith. And you know, right now, as we go through the pandemic, and I can just feel the anxiety escalating again with the unknowing of this pandemic, of what direction it's going to go, and what is this going to mean for our lives, for our businesses, for our schools, for our own health, that we can take notice of what Mary did. She went to another person of faith. And that's one reason, that is a very important reason why we come to church. Because we come to be with other people of faith. We come to be with people that believe in the promise that a Messiah would come. And that God shows mercy on God's people. God did not promise an easy life, but God promised that God would walk with us. And God walks with us through the people who walk beside us. And this Christmas, you may be feeling much sadness. It has been a time of loss in this past year for many of you. And it is hard. Christmas is a very hard holiday. It's very hard whether the loss is recent or whether it's more extended. It's hard to get up for the holiday. It's hard to feel joyful. But I want to encourage you to remember every day, this is the day the Lord has made. What if every morning before we got out of bed, we said those words, this is the day the Lord has made. Will you say that with me, please? This is the day the Lord has made. Say it again with joy. This is the day the Lord has made. It is, and we can choose how we will respond to situations around us. I've been listening to a podcast by a man by the name of Ben 
Boitner, I believe that's the way it's pronounced, B-U-E-T-T-N-E-R, on his research with the Blue Zones. You may have heard about this. The Blue Zones are areas, five places around the world that Dan Boitner went with National Geographic to study the centenarians. Why were people living to over 100 in these areas? And he found nine common factors. And I thought these were particularly interesting. And I actually heard somebody ask him about this, that one of those factors was the people had some type of faith tradition that they acknowledged weekly. And so somebody asked, well, is this, does this mean that they believed in God? And he said, well, National Geographic and the researchers I've been working with can't quantify that so much, whether somebody believes in God, but you can quantify whether somebody goes to temple or goes to church or goes to some place of worship, wherever that might be, on a weekly basis. And their research showed that people who go four or more times a month tend to add years to their life actually years to their life. And people who had at least three friends added years to their life. You know, coming to church is something that we can do to praise God. And it's also something we can do to be in community when times are going well, and when times are not going not so well. Because we all have more than three friends here. We all have people who will lift us up and put their arms around us as we are grieving the loss of a loved one, or as we are preparing for the ups and downs of the healthcare system that's surely to come in the events of the coming year. We don't walk alone. We walk in community. Could it just be that our prayers for peace and unity are being answered right now? And the opportunities that we have to serve those who come from another country and to serve those who sit in the pews beside us, or those in the community that we pass on a day in and day out basis. And this week, I want to encourage you to reach out. Reach out to your friends and neighbors. If you are feeling sad, let someone know. If you are in need of help, let someone know. And if you feel that you are being called to help others, let people know and do it. Just do it. Because this is the day the Lord has made. And why have we been given this opportunity? Because God has planted seeds of love in our hearts. And we are called to share that love throughout the world with all that we meet and all that we have yet to meet. Let us pray. God of growth and love, may the little seed that you have planted in me bear much fruit. May the people I encounter come to know you by the words and actions of my love, a love that I first came to know by your words and actions. Prepare my soul for the coming of the Lord and continue to have me serve you as an instrument of your love. I ask this through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Christ. Yeah. Oh.
one another in peace. chalice 
and the, that cup that has the wine and the wafer in it for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the Sunday after. So if you are here, or if you choose to have it at home, you will get the same thing. This morning, we will be doing our Eucharist as we have been doing it, where you will come up the aisle. The um, offering plate is in the back, and we encourage you to leave your offering in the plate, and we will get it after the service, rather than um, passing the plate as we would normally. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> oh. So, I just want to be sure. Oh, yeah, Ilsa. Will there be candles Christmas Eve? Yes, there will be candles Christmas Eve. We will have candles Christmas Eve. And so, we're going to try to keep it as as normal as we would, normally, as we would have it. Um, but we will cut down on the music. That will be, uh, which is saddens us all, but I think is the wisest choice. And we will try to distance everyone. Um, but uh, this congregation seems to do a really good job of, of naturally distancing. And, um, and so, um, <laughs> <laughs> in the best way, way possible. <laughs> Gospel command us to continue 
a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound of duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By whom, and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And make us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith.
page 339. Let us stand and pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee 